All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris with Beyond Pay, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. Um, at Beyond Pay, we are guided by three simple principles, and they are to learn, collaborate, and care. Um, so that's why we do these webinars, and we hope that you get a lot out of them. So let me start today by just saying thank you. Thank you for being a customer. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. We care about you, we care about your day, we care about your reputation, and we care about your success. So thank you. And as many of you already, many of you already know, um, Beyond Pay does more than just payroll. We work with hundreds of companies to help with various areas of their, their HR. Our goal is to find the perfect mix of technology and service to complement your HR team. We want you to actually use your HR technology. So in that light, today's webinar focuses on benefits enrollment and how we use technology to make the process easier for you and your employees. Lindsay Rice, one of our stellar implementation specialists, is going to take you through the, the whole process. And just a reminder, as we move through, you can post questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. Lindsay, they're all yours. Thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. As Chris mentioned, we are going to be talking about streamlining the benefit enrollment process today. Employee benefit enrollment can include your company's annual open enrollment for benefits, new employee enrollments, and also life change events. Some examples of life change events are marriage, adding a spouse, birth or adoption, adding a child, and when an employee gains eligibility, such as changing from part-time to full-time employment status. On the agenda today, we will cover what benefit plans and benefit profiles mean to the benefit enrollment process, how using announcements, reminders, and to-do items can streamline the enrollment process. We will review the employee experience in the system, how you as an administrator can track enrollment progress and control the approval process once the employee has submitted their benefit elections, we will talk about how you can integrate carrier connections and data feeds into the system to help streamline data to carriers through EDI feeds. And I'll show you where you can find all of the data insight you need through reports, charts, and graphs. Also, keep in mind if you're interested in or want to see a more customized view of what we cover today, you can reach out to anyone on our Beyond Pay team or email sales at beyondpay.com. By the end of the session today, you should be able to see how using the system for benefit enrollment will save administrators time, improve accuracy with the employee self-service portal, insurance, ensure compliance, and you will see options for a simple carrier connection process. So let's take a look at some of the things you can accomplish with self-service benefit enrollment. To understand the benefit enrollment process, we must first understand two key components to the enrollment process, benefit plans and benefit profiles. Benefit plans contain all of the information for the employee to electronically elect their benefits, including a summary of benefits and plan comparisons. Once benefit plan elections are approved, the benefit deductions will automatically populate to payroll based on the benefit plan premium configurations. Once the benefit enrollment process has been completed, an employee's benefit plan elections can be found in their employee information profile in the Beyond Pay system. Benefit profiles will include the eligible plans for enrollment with instructions for the employee to guide or assist them through the enrollment process. Benefit profiles can also be configured for your specific open enrollment viability dates, and the employee will have the option to enroll during that date range. Questionnaires can also be built into the benefit profiles to help gather information during open enrollment for the employer, broker, and or the carriers. To prepare for benefit enrollment, all eligible employees should be assigned an eligible benefit profile as seen on the screenshot on this slide. In Beyond Pay, we have the ability to set up email notifications and announcements for benefit enrollment periods. 
Notifications can streamline communication to employees when their benefit enrollment is about to begin and also when it's approaching the end of the enrollment period. This can be set up for a new hire enrollment and also the company's open enrollment. Announcements for open enrollment can be set up as a pop-up screen when they first log in on their PC or mobile device, and they can also be a banner on their home screen, which will remain on their home screen for the duration of the enrollment period. In a little bit, I'll show you some of the examples of these announcements when we're going through the employee experience in our system. Once the employee has submitted their enrollment, notifications can be sent to the approving administrator and to-do items will be created, which help to streamline the approval process. To-do items can be found in the upper right corner of the home screen by clicking on the blue bell icon. Now, let's take a look at the enrollment process from the employee's perspective. In this scenario, we're gonna be logging in as Beth. Beth is an employee who's been with the company for a couple of years, and she has just received an email notification that it's time for open enrollment. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears now. You should be seeing a login screen, so I'm gonna log in as Beth. All right, and here we're viewing the employee's home screen. So as I mentioned before, announcements are a very important factor when you're going through your open enrollment process. It's a great way to communicate to employees when open enrollment is about to begin, when you're approaching open enrollment, and also when it has already begun. So what we're seeing right here is the pop-up communicator, um, which we're using for open enrollment right now. So as the employee, I'm able to check off this box right here to not show this pop-up again, or I can simply click the close button to get it out of the way right now. And this means that every time I log in after this point, the pop-up will appear every time I log in, whether it be on my mobile device or the PC. So as Beth, I'm just gonna go ahead and close that pop-up communicator. And as I can see on the left-hand side, the announcement still remains on my home screen as a banner. Over to the right-hand side, I see the section for my benefits. So this is the section where the employee will go for all of their benefit change requests. So right here, we see the life change event link. So if the employee goes through a life changing event, they can submit their life change request right here. If they're a new employee, they can also click right here to start their new employee enrollment and also open enrollment. And at any time during the year, the employee can click on this link that says view benefits to view their current enrollments, what they're currently enrolled in. So as Beth, I'm going to go ahead and start my open enrollment. So I'm going to click on the blue link right here. All right, and the first thing that we have here is the questionnaire. So my employer has built out a couple of questions to gather some information. So the first question is, what level of coverage for medical will you elect? And as Beth, I'm going, I'm going to be selecting family coverage. And now this second question, do you smoke or use tobacco products? No, I do not. Once I've answered my questions, I just click the submit button, click OK, and then we get our success message. Lindsay? Yes. Um, quick question. So just so our... Um, our listeners understand here, um, how much of this that got us to this point in the setup had to be done by the employer and how much did you do uh, and do you do as you help our customers build this out? So at Beyond Pay, we will set all of this up for you. Um, really for the setup portion, we just need to know what the employers want. Um, questionnaires are completely optional. Um, but they are a great functionality of the system. And if they choose to have a questionnaire, we would just need to know what types of questions they want to ask in the verbiage. Mm -hmm. um, the benefit plans, we, can, we will set those up for the employers. We will just need to know um, the, the breakdown of the benefit plans so that the, um, you know, what, what types of benefits they are, the coverage levels, those types of things. Typically that can, um, information can get, get gathered from the broker. 
Mm -hmm. um, but the beyond pay team, we will be setting everything up in the system for the employer. It's mostly just because it's so customizable, we would need to know what they want. Okay. Okay. I would imagine brokers love this. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the brokers just love, um, you know, gathering all of the information. But, you know, we've worked with so many different types of brokers before that, um, you know, th th we can accommodate anything. Yeah. Yeah. So now once I have answered the questions on the questionnaire, by default, the first screen that the employee is brought to is the instructions. So like I mentioned previously, the instructions are built out in the benefit profile and they can be as straight to the point as you want or as detailed as you want. So the instructions are meant to help guide and assist the employee through the benefit enrollment process, um, especially if it's a new hire, it's the first time that they're seeing this. So you probably want to get as detailed as possible to help guide them through the entire process. But as you can see down here towards the bottom, there's some steps to help guide them. Also, the phone number to call if they have questions and also a nice little video to help them. Okay, but this isn't Beth's first rodeo, so she's just going to go ahead and get right into her open enrollment. So we're going to click the continue button. The next page is any current benefit enrollments, but Beth is not currently going through any other enrollments, so we're just gonna go ahead and click Save and Continue. And the first group of plans we have are our medical plans. So at the top of each group of benefits, the employee has the ability to waive that benefit option by checking off this box right here. Now, some different benefits have different coverage levels. So when we scroll down here through the medical, we can see what I mean. So we have the EPO plan right here through Horizon. We also have this Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO plan. And then we have an Aetna HSA eligible plan right down here. So within our group of medical, there's three different options. So as Beth, I'm not really sure what I want right now, so I have the ability to compare my plans. So if I click on this link, Compare Plans, I actually want to compare the EPO plan and the PPO plan family coverage because I know that I need that family level, but I'm not really sure what the difference is between EPO and PPO. So I'm going to choose the plans that I would like to compare, and I'm going to select the plan attributes that mean the most to me. So to me as the employee, I want to know how much am I spending and then let's look at our different types of office visits and the deductibles. So those mean the most to me. I want to see what the difference is. So once I've selected everything I'd like to compare, I hit the next button and then all of this information is being pulled from the benefit plans that we've built out. So this is the information that we're gathering for the benefit plan build out all of these different premiums and all of these different types of deductibles and visits and, and whatnot. So now that I've compared my plans, I can click OK. And now I know that I want the EPO plan. So right here, I'm going to select my coverage as family. And I'm going to go ahead and check off this box right here to select the plan. Now, because I'm selecting a plan that requires dependents, I have this pop-up box right here that's going to tell me what required information it needs. So right here, it wants me to select my spouse and children because I've selected family coverage. So I'm going to click right here to select my spouse, and I see Jack is here. He's my husband, so I'm going to select him, and then I'm going to put that he is not a smoker. And once I scroll down, I can select my child, and here's my son, Aaron and I hope he doesn't smoke, so we're gonna select no. Now, if for whatever reason, my, one of my contacts or none of my contacts are in here, I can click on this link right here to add the contact to the system and then select that contact in my benefit plan. So as the employee is going through, let's say if my son wasn't listed, I would be able to add him right here and then select him. But my husband and son are both here, so I'm gonna hit save and select. Now this green checkbox right here next to medical lets me know that I've filled in all of the required information and now I'm ready to continue. All right, so now we're on to our dental plan. So we have Delta Dental 
and it's already checked off because this is a passive enrollment feature. So Beth is currently enrolled in Delta Dental. So with passive enrollment, anything that the employee is currently enrolled in will be checked off by default. So unless they need to change anything, they can simply just verify the information that's here and then move on. So Beth has Delta Dental for her family plus herself. I don't need to make any changes for that, so I simply just click the continue button. All right, that takes me straight to vision. So for vision, I would like employee only coverage for vision. So I'm just gonna simply select that and then hit continue. And that moves us on to our voluntary plans. So right now we have voluntary life, which I would like to select and I need to select my beneficiary for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link, and then my husband, Jack, is gonna be 100% my beneficiary. So I'm gonna enter in the percentage right here, and hit save and select. Hit continue one more time, and this brings me to my FSA medical. Now Beth thinks that she wants FSA medical. She didn't enroll in it last time, she kinda of regrets it, so she's gonna go ahead and elect it this time. So we're gonna check off the box to elect it, and now we need to enter in the annual amount. So I think that I want $1,000 into my FSA. So I'm gonna put it in there for right now, but maybe think about it a little bit, maybe crunch some numbers to figure out if $1,000 is enough, maybe it's too much or too little, but at least for now, I'm gonna go ahead and select it and enter in that amount. I'm gonna hit continue again, and this brings us to the company provided plans. So the employees are automatically enrolled in these company provided plans. I can see that my employer is providing FSA transit and some company paid life. These items are grayed out, so it doesn't allow me to change anything. This is just a default. They're automatically enrolled. So this is just an FYI to the employee. They can review it and then just hit continue. Now, once the employee has gone through all of the different benefit groups, we see on the toolbar on the left-hand side, everything has a nice green checkbox next to it. That means that they've completed everything that they've needed to, and it brings us to the confirm and submit page. Now, again, this is completely customizable, whatever you'd like confirm and submit to say. This is built out in the benefit profile but the employee has the ability to download a PDF to review in the, its entirety their benefit enrollment. So it allows them to review all of their plans and the details of those plans and the costs to them. The employee can also scroll down through their confirm and submit page to see what they've selected and verify everything. By clicking on these detail links right here, it brings us to any plan documents that the employer has uploaded into the benefit profiles for us, and also perhaps the website to the carrier. If at this time the employee needs to make any changes, perhaps maybe they see that they accidentally selected the wrong coverage level, they can click on the pencil icon and it brings them directly back into that benefit group. The employee also has the ability to use this toolbar on the left to toggle through the different groups as they need to. But in Beth's situation, she has to run off to a meeting. She thinks that she's pretty much good to go. She wants to think about that FSA a little bit more. But for right now, she's selected everything to the best of her knowledge, and she's going to return to it in a, in a minute. All right? So right now, as Beth, we're going to log out and we're actually gonna fast forward into time. So we're gonna pretend it's nighttime. Beth is now home and she's gonna log in from her mobile device. She's crunched the numbers for her FSA. She's actually realized that maybe $1,000 is a little bit too much. So she's gonna change that amount and then make her submission. So what you should see right now on my screen is a simulation of our mobile device, our mobile app. So I'm gonna log in here. All right, and you can see on the mobile app, we also have the pop-up announcements. It's exactly the same as the PC view. So as Beth, I'm gonna click close, 
and this is what the mobile app looks like. So the announcements are at the top and all of those other widgets that we saw on the employee's dashboard on the PC are here on the mobile app. So it mimics the exact same lit look and feel. So I'm going to scroll down to the My Benefits section. This is how it looks on the mobile app. And I can see that I'm 99% done with my open enrollment submission. So I'm just going to click on the blue words, Submit Open Enrollment. And here's the exact same look and feel as the enrollment when I was on the PC. So since I know what I've already done, I don't need to go through the entire process again. I just need to hop straight to the FSA. So I'm going to click this drop down and go straight to my FSA Medical. And here's where I have um, elected my, the, the benefit for the FSA. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my annual amount. I'm going to enter in $900 and click OK. So I just changed the, the FSA medical from $1,000 to $900. That was the one change that I needed to make, and now I'm ready to submit. So now I'm going to go to the Confirm and Submit page. I'm going to read through everything right here. On the mobile app, the employee still has the ability to download a PDF of their elections and go to any of these uh, benefit groups if they need to make changes. But as Beth, I know that that was the only change I needed to make. So I'm just going to scroll through here, make sure everything looks good, everything looks great. So I'm going to hit the Submit button. Now to submit the benefit enrollment, the employee needs to electronically sign their enrollment with their Beyond Pay password. And then hit accept. And then they should see the success message. So hooray, your enrollment has successfully been submitted. Excellent. I can also see that my benefit enrollment is 100% complete. It has been submitted and it's pending approval. So now at this point as Beth, I'm done with everything that I needed to do. I went through and I made my elections to the best of my ability, assigned my dependents and beneficiaries and submitted it to my administrator for approval. Okay. Now, just bear with me for one moment. So now we're going to go ahead and pretend that now that Beth has submitted her enrollment, now an email has gone to her administrator. The administrator for the company is Kathy Watts. So Kathy is going to come in in the morning and she is going to have an email letting her know that Beth has submitted her open enrollment and it's ready for Kathy's approval. All right, so on my screen now, you should see that Kathy has now logged in. This is Kathy's dashboard. Now, as an administrator, the first thing that I want to do for the benefit enrollment approval is I want to go to my to-do items. So as I had mentioned before in the PowerPoint, to access the to-do items, you just have to go to the blue bell icon in the upper right-hand corner. So by clicking on the blue bell, we see that the first item to do is to approve Beth's open enrollment. So we can simply just click the approve button or the reject button, depending on what we need to do. As the administrator, they can also click on the pencil icon to go into the actual request and see what the employee has selected. So as Kathy, I could go in through all of this and see what Beth selected, or I could just simply go to the Confirm Selections tab and see what she's chosen. Okay. Now as Kathy, I just want to go ahead and approve it. And it'll come up with this screen as well, which is also another way that the administrator can review what the employee has selected. Lindsay, what would happen if some employees didn't complete their enrollment but thought they had? Well, so if they didn't complete their enrollment, we actually do have some charts and graphs and reports that can help the administrator track what their employees are doing. So right here on the benefits dashboard for Kathy, we have some great graphs and charts that help her monitor the progress of her employees. 
So it would be nice to, you know, pretend like we know what everyone's doing at every moment, but unfortunately, sometimes things get a little scattered. So here we have a report right here for our new hire enrollment status. So this helps Kathy track her new hires and which of the new hires have submitted their new employee enrollments. And what's great about these charts is that you can simply just click on the chart to go into the report itself. So based on this report, I can see that a lot of my, a lot of my new hires have not completed their new hire enrollment. So we can see that all of these people have not started it. And then I've got a couple of employees who have started it, but this status of new tells me that they've started it, but they did not submit it yet. So at this point, if we're getting down to the, the nitty gritty of the new hires and submitting their enrollments, we might want to send out some reminder emails to let them know that they need to get their enrollments in within the first 30 days of their employment. You know, so we can use this data to then send out reminders and nudge in the new hires to go ahead and submit their elections. Great. Also going back to Kathy's benefits dashboard, some other reports that are very handy to use during in benefit enrollments, we've got our benefit open enrollment status. So just like the new hire enrollment status report, this can be used specifically during open enrollment. So what this report will tell us is which employees have not started, which have started but haven't submitted, which employees have submitted their open enrollment, and which I've already approved. So not started means they need to do everything. They haven't even clicked the button to begin it. New means they clicked the button to begin it, but then they never finished it. Submitted means that's Beth. Beth submitted hers and it's been submitted for approval and approved means everything's been done. Now as an administrator, um, once they approve the benefit elections, we do have the ability to integrate with um, the carriers. So we can set up data feeds through EDI connections so that once the administrators approve the benefit enrollment elections, the data electronically feeds over to the carriers through EDI feeds. So it really is the most streamlined, you know, straight to the point way to get everything done. And as an administrator, it does save you time and paperwork and it really removes the room for error when you have these data feeds set up so that the data syncs directly from beyond pay to the carriers. All right, and then also another report that the administrators do have are the benefit change request summary reports. So the benefit change request summary report captures all of the changes, whether it be a life change event, a new employee, or open enrollment. All right, so this report will capture any change request or any benefit enrollment that the employee submits. And by clicking on this, the, the graph right here, this brings us directly into the report. So you're able to see which employees have submitted what types of change events. So it could have been a life change event, it could have been their new employee. This will help you to track everything and also the status of their change request. All right, so then let me go ahead and just for the sake of example, I'll go to Beth and I'll go into her employee record. All right, and now as Kathy, we've set up tabs specifically for benefits and carrier connections to just show you how this looks. Here's where the benefit plans are located and then also those carrier connections. It can show you all of the benefit packages that the employee has and then also their current plans and dependents. So everything is at your fingertips when you have it all integrated into the system. Okay. So as you can see, everything is very customizable, very flexible based on whatever the administrators need, whatever best fits their employees and how to streamline the communications. And that concludes my review of the employee benefit enrollment experience. Liz, do you have any questions for us?
Awesome. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Yeah, I had a few trickle in and just as a reminder, if anything pops up while you're digesting what Lindsay just covered, you can throw those in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, but someone did ask, what is the requirement for rolling out the benefit administration tool? Yeah, definitely. That's a great question. So the only requirements that we have for the benefit enrollment tool is first thing first, you need the HR module within the Beyond Pay system. Once we have the HR module turned on, or if you already have it turned on, then what we need is just the benefit plans and then to build out the benefit profile. So we could get the benefit plan information from the employer um, and or the broker, and that would include the benefit plan premiums, the different coverage levels, the different types of plans that are provided, and then once we have the benefit plans built out, we would then build the benefit profile, um, you know, with all of the eligible benefit plans and then also the instructions and all of those things that we saw me flow through as Beth. Perfect. Um, another question, how would you initiate the EDI feed with the carriers? Is that something you have knowledge on, Lindsay? Or would someone just have to reach out to sales, I think? Yeah, well, so that's something that we could, it's definitely customizable based on a lot of different factors. So typically, you know, going with the example of open enrollment, um, we would work to build the EDI feeds with the carriers based on their specifications, their meaning the carrier. So the carrier will tell us what they need and how they need it and what data. We'll, so then we'll build the EDI file and then based on the timing of when they want to receive that, once everything is approved in Beyond Pay, it flows over into the EDI file, which then gets submitted to the carrier based on those specifications. Typically during open enrollment, going with the example of what we went through today with Beth and Kathy, usually for open enrollment, EDI feeds will be turned off until the last day of open enrollment then we'll turn the EDI feeds back on so that all of the enrollments are sent all at once rather than one trickling in every day or every hour. But from an administrator perspective, all you have to do is make sure that everything gets approved in Beyond Pay and then work with, um, you know, your Beyond Pay representative to communicate, you know, when to turn feeds off and things like that. And we can work with the brokers on that. But then once everything's approved and beyond pay, it just feeds over automatically to the carrier. Very good. Thank you. Um, also, another question is, how are deductions taken? Do I have to enter those into payroll? No. So the great thing about benefit plans, and this is why we urge everyone to use benefit plans instead of manual payroll deductions, is that within the benefit plan, we will build out your benefit premiums. And then within payroll, it'll take the monthly premium and then break it down into a per pay period amount based on your payroll frequency. So if you process bi-weekly or semi-monthly or weekly, the system will do the math for you. So we'll build out the benefit plans with the benefit plan premium configuration. And then once benefit plans are approved by the administrator, the per pay period deductions flow into the employee's profile, which then flow onto their pay statements and payroll. So no, to answer your question, you don't, with the benefit plans, you don't have to manually add payroll deductions to the employee's record or pay statement at all. And that includes the employer portion as well. So that data is tracked. And for employers that are large enough and have to put on the W-2s, the data is automatically there and ready to populate the W-2. Um, or it can be used for benefit statements where you're showing the employee uh, not just what they're paying for insurance and what they're getting paid in their salary and wages, but also what benefits they're getting that adds up to their total compensation. Exactly. And a, a lot of employers will love to use the benefit statement reports that we have available in the system, not only because they look great, but because when it comes time for bonuses and raises and things like that, a lot of employees don't realize how much money employers pay for their benefits 
So if you're tracking the employer contribution, you can show that to them on a scale of here's what you were paid through your direct deposit and here's what we paid for your benefits. So it's a great way to show employees what extra benefits they're getting from the employer. Awesome. Well, that's all that I had. So thank you so much, Lindsay and Chris and everyone who joined us today. Um, I'll be sending out a recording of today's webinar in case you want to refresh or share it along with anyone in your company. Um, but we appreciate your time and hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.